name is Chris from ChristopherHall.com. Welcome to this video where we're going to be continuing our journey on uh, scoliosis. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the muscles involved. We're going to be looking at two areas. So we're going to understand the muscles um, involved in the lumbar region and the muscles involved in the uh, thoracic region. Obviously, the lumbar region, uh, lumbar region is the lower back and the thoracic region is the middle to upper back. So we're going to be looking at some of the muscles involved there, um, but I'm also going to uh, sort of talk about some of the, um, and sort of describe some of the terminology as well, um, because some of it could be a little bit, um, uh, a little bit jargon, if you will. Um, and before we get into that, I will just mention uh, my social channels on Twitter. It's at Christopher Hole. Uh, Facebook is Christopher Hole Training and Instagram is Christopher Hole. Uh, just come along there, like and follow. It'd be great to have you there, um, answering any questions that you may have, um, but also just sharing the information with you. Uh, alternatively, we can go to the website, which is ChristopherHole.com forward slash join, and you can uh, come along, join uh, the, the monthly newsletter, and uh, you can gain, again, more information from any realm of health and fitness that we try to cover. Uh, exercise, it could be nutrition, it could be uh, mindset, uh, attitude, habits, anything like that that we, that we sort of cover. So please do come along to the website or along to the social channels. So uh, back to today's video where we're looking at the muscles involved in scoliosis. Here on slide number one, this is where we're looking at the lumbar area or the lumbar region of the back, which is the, the lower part of the back. So we've got here, this is our diagram of um, a scoliotic spine. Um, we don't really need to worry about the extent of the scoliosis because that's not, again, that's not the focus of this video. We're very much focused on what the muscles are doing uh, within that um, uh, region of the back. So I've taken this information from um, scoliosis, muscle imbalance and treatment uh, from the journal, uh, uh, British Journal of Sports Medicine. Now, uh, what I've also put on the, the screen is this little diagram here, which is just saying convex and concave. So just to make clear uh, what side or what area or what region of the spine that I'm talking about with regards to the muscles. Now, I haven't put any of the muscles on, um, on the screen um, because I'm going to sort of describe where they are and it was quite hard for me to find a picture which had all the muscles that I wanted on uh, to be able to describe. So I've just gone with the spine and I will talk about where the muscles are. So what we've got here, the first two muscles, what they found is the glute medius and the quadratus lumborum on the convex side were weaker. Now in their text it was weaker, you may find in other texts it's um, inhibited. And what they're basically saying is the muscle isn't working as effectively as it could. So the concave side, uh, sorry, convex side, is this outer side. So as you can see here, it bulges outward. That's the convex surface. So if we look at the, uh, the diagram here, that would be on this spine anyway, it would be this side. So on the concave side, the glute medius, which is the muscle of the hip that's on the side of the hip, it's not necessarily on the back, it's not on the front, it's on the side of the hip, joining the hip bone, uh, sorry, the femur here, to uh, the hip bone here. So that was seen as weaker. The quadratus lumborum on this side was also seen as weaker. So what they're showing here is that both of these muscles here aren't functioning as they should be. So these might be muscles that we would want to bring extra activity to. So when we're doing um, an exercise program, these are the muscles that we would uh, put a little bit more focus on and we would um, want to make them more active. Now that's not necessarily there to correct the spine, but it's there not to, um, or to prevent or minimize and manage any progression. So to slow any progression of the scoliosis is to try and keep those muscles um, active, if you will. And what we then have is on the erector spinae and the multifidus, which is on the concave side. Now, on the concave side, we would have this bit here, because this is the con concave surface, so it curves inward. So that would be in there, and it would also be in here as well. So you could see it would flip sides. So here it would be on the left side, and here it would be on the right side. Because the, the erector spine and the multifidus go all the way up the spine on both sides. So we wouldn't just be 
focusing on here, it would be here and here, if that starts to um, sort of make sense to anyone. So with regards to the erector spinae and the mortifidus, these were the ones that we would be focusing on uh, with regards to any uh, strengthening exercises, if you will. What we then get is the thoracic spine. So the two diagrams are exactly the same. The reference and the source of the information is exactly the same. All I've done is I've changed the muscles. So we're now looking at further up the back into this area. So we've got a trapezius, a serratus anterior and rhomboid. Now rhomboids join the shoulder blade here to the spine, shoulder blade to the spine. The serratus anterior is more sort of, you could say, under the under the armpit and under the upper arm. So if you put your upper arm against your body, that would be touching the serratus anterior. So it's on this sort of side of the rib cage, and obviously on this side of the rib cage as well. And then trapezius is a big muscle, a big kite-shaped muscle that basically spans the whole of the thoracic and upper spine in the cervical spine as well. So it sort of joins on here, goes all the way out and up to the shoulder here and then up in this area of the back as well so you can see it's sort of a big diamond slash kite shape of the upper back here so the trapezius on the convex side and the serratus anterior on the convex side so as we get up to the top here we're now starting to look here so whereas before this was the concave for the erector spinae this would also be the concave for the erector spinae in the thoracic spine. But what we're looking at is the convex side, which is the trapezius and the serratus anterior. So these muscles here, the trapezius and the serratus anterior, would need to be activated uh, using exercises and using movements of the shoulder and movements of the shoulder blade um, to be able to, to activate those muscles. And then you've got the rhomboid on the concave side. So you've got the rhomboid on this side. So this was seen to be uh, uh, weaker and would need to be activated. So what we can start to understand are, certainly from this source anyway, the muscles um, that are inactive, the muscles that aren't working as effectively, because their, emo their opposing um, muscles will be on the active side. So there, here we're talking about weaker and inactive, the the synergist or the opposing muscle would be the uh, the more active on the opposite side of the body, if that makes sense. So what we can start to understand now is a little bit more of an understanding of what muscles are doing what and where in the body they are. So when we go into a gym or we go and see a therapist or whatever it might be, we can then start uh, accessing uh, the right muscles and working them in the right way because the opposing muscles would just need to be inhibited, which would be more stretching, massage, recovery type um, um, exercise, if you will, rather than the, the traditional exercise of possibly lifting weights or just movements of the arm and things like that on the, on the weaker side. So hopefully this has given you a greater understanding of that. Again, it's not there to, in a sense, diagnose what muscles are in your body doing what, but hopefully it gives you a better understanding of the types of muscles, what they could be doing, and how you might need to go about um, uh, putting your focus on them, if you will, with regards to exercises, uh, massage, stretches, and things like that. So uh, many thanks for watching. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. Hopefully, hopefully it's given you a little bit of an insight into um, what you need to do within your body and within your exercise sessions to help manage and uh, prevent any progression of your scoliosis. So many thanks for watching. Uh, my name is Chris from ChristopherHall.com. I'll speak to you in a future video.